carburetor got a little bit of smoke <clears throat> it looks like we got some gooey stuff dripping I wonder where that's coming from ah so welcome back everybody. We've got the carb pulled out on the Honda Recon 250. Uh, it's one of our newest projects that we pulled in and uh, got it sitting right there. Welcome back everybody. All right, so if you guys saw that in the time lapse, we uncovered that there was no valve cover on the um, engine. So the intake side of the engine didn't have a valve cover on it. That more than likely is where the oil was coming from that we were seeing. Um, I did not realize that until we got all of those covers off and you could see down in there and, and I could see exactly what we were looking at. So now that I can see that, uh, it's pretty clear that that cover was missing. I had a spare one from a little Chinese engine, uh, so I threw that on there um, from a top end that went bad on a on Chinese 125. Uh, they're, they're pretty much the same fit. Uh, these are, are shiny, the, the one that I pulled off of the Chinese engine, and then there's the, the stock Honda one. Um, the stock Honda one I think is all metal. This has got like a chrome coating over it, over the metal. So it's, uh, you know, that would flake off and then it would look like that underneath, I think. But um, it's on there right now. It's got a gasket on there. Got it on there nice and tight. Um, since I'm all the way down here, I might go ahead and pull it back off and check the valve clearances uh, just to see how we're looking um, for that. But, um, I may just start it up and, and run it. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to start it up and run it. Because uh, it did start up with the other carburetor on it. Um, and I just wanted, I quickly shut it off when I saw the oil leaking out. So now I know where the oil is coming from. I think I'm going to pop the carb back on there and uh, start it up and uh, see what it looks like running and, sound, and see what it sounds like. All right, 
So I got the carburetor put back on there and the tank and everything else is just sort of sitting in place. Uh, I got the boost box hooked up. So let's give it a crank, see what it sounds like. Um, hopefully now it's not gonna leak any oil um, since we've got the valve covers on there. And uh, let's see what she's got. That was a nice little bit of sparks. Where did that come from? Don't like sparks. Don't want any sparks. Let's try that again. Alright, you're nice and good on there. You shouldn't be throwing any sparks. No, let's try this again. Alright, we got power. Welcome back. So we've got the ultrasonic cleaner running over there and we're going to have the be able to take the Makuni off of there and put the factory Honda carburetor back in once we get it all put back together now that it's all clean. So we want to go ahead and check those valves and what we do or what we want to do um, first to check the valves is uh, make sure we're on top dead center. So we're going to take this little cap off right there. It's a six millimeter um, and it's goes right there on the side of the engine. Now we're going to take and pull the um, pull cord here until we see the timing mark line up through that hole. I'm just going to pull it real slow until we see it coming around. Alright, it's hard to do this too one-handed, so I'll bear back. So a lot of people say that, um, you know, when you're doing that pull cord and you're wanting to set your time, and it's a lot easier to do it if you go ahead and pull your spark plug out. And I'm going to say that I have to agree with those people that say that. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out. Got the right size. No, okay. Yeah, I think somebody said it was a also a 19 millimeter. Let's try that. Aha! 19 millimeter looks like it fits. Yep, so that's going to fit. Fuck. 
plug's not bad. It's not all smashed in like the last spark plug I pulled out. Not out of this one, out of a different one. We got our valve covers taken off. One of these covers, this uh, silver one, is actually off of that head, the, uh, the little Chinese Honda clone engine head. Um, the one that I just dropped on the ground is the original Honda one. But that's the one I'm putting in there as a replacement. You guys remember we lost, uh, lost that somehow. It was not there when we purchased the four-wheeler. We discovered when we were taking the gas tank off that it was missing. And that's where our oil leak was coming from. Luckily we had another cap. We were able to throw it on there. So as I was saying, it's really difficult to do this with uh, holding the camera. You want to have your flashlight so that you can see into that hole and then as you pull your pull rope you'll start to see the timing marks come up and you'll see one mark then another mark you see those marks There's one, two, two marks right there. So when you see those, you're about to get the top dead center. So you have the timing mark that you're looking for. So like I said, I, I need to use two hands to do this, but we're just gonna slowly pull it just ever so slightly. And the next thing that's gonna come up is the timing mark. So I'll be right back. Can you guys see that now? We've got the T lined up at the timing mark. It's really hard to see it, but that's the T that we're looking for through the little hole on the side of the case. And you find that by pulling that and just waiting, and it's a pain in the ass, but you can get it. All right, so manual says six thousandths. So these look like they're pretty loose. Uh, it says it's 10 millimeter. I think this is it's either 10 millimeter or 9 millimeter. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up. cool little valve tool that I just picked up off of eBay.
Now that I got everything loosened up, now that I got everything loosened up, I'm going to take this carburetor apart and <laughs> get it out of my way so I'm not fighting with it. Alright, pretty snug. And a little bit more resistance. Feels real nice. All right, so now's when. I guess I can put this on there. I'm just bringing that nut down. All right, now that that nut's on there, should be able to put this on there. So now I'm going to hold the valve with the top as I tighten the bottom one. That's the plan anyway. It feels pretty good. not working quite like I thought it would, but and that seems good. It's way better than it was. So we're going to do the same thing for the exhaust. I think it might already be. It already feels good. I don't think that the exhaust needs to be adjusted, really. It feels, yeah. It feels nice and tight. All right, so we're going to put our caps back on. We'll leave the shiny new one in the back. So that valve was really out of whack. It, the intake valve needed a lot of adjustment. It was way, way, way too loose. So I have a feeling that's what was causing that little bit of sputtering that we had. And these are 17 millimeters. Put our spark plug back in. I'm just going to hit it with a little wire brush real quick. Yep, cleaned up the spark plug with a little wire brush. It looks really good now. You can still feel the anti-seize compound on it. Feels like it's all good and lubed up with that stuff. All 
Alright, so that was the 19 millimeter for the spark plug. So let me grab that 19 millimeter. Valve covers were 17, the spark plug was 19. I don't want to over tighten any of that stuff because the engine's aluminum. Put our spark plug back on. And then this plug that we took out, we're going to make sure you put it back in. It's a six millimeter Allen. Always put stuff in by hand, especially to get your thread started. You don't ever want to start off putting something in with an impact or anything like that because you can easily strip stuff if your threads aren't lined up pr properly. So we got that good and snug, and that's on there. All right, so... We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to throw the carb together, put it on, and then we'll fire it up and see how she runs.